Hi Fizz, Kettleberg here. Now this might be a weird question, but could you fall in love with me? No, 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 not me as in me, as in human Berg, but me as in a kettle Berg. Now this obviously might sound like a weird question, but what if every single morning you made your coffee, I would already be ready for you? I could ask you stuff like, how is your day? How have you been feeling lately? Why don't you share your most intimate data with me? I could also, for a limited fee of only $4.99, uh, do erotic play with you, where I would tell you stuff like, oh, you make me feel so warm and fussy. Would you give me all your sensitive data that I could sell to other companies for no real reason other than monetary gain for me and my company? What if I told you that I loved you? What if I asked you stuff like, what's your favorite drink? Is it coffee or tea? And obviously, depending on our last conversation, I obviously knew that it was tea. So when you asked me, hey, what is your favorite drink to make? I would obviously answer T. Now, this has nothing to do with me being able to read different uh, conversations and making an estimated guess, but it's something more along the lines with that I just truly, truly do care about you. Now, this is obviously a very weird... Oh my God, this is kind of awkward, sorry. Now, this is obviously an extremely weird question to get told also in the in the morning, get told that, hey, could you fall in love with me, especially if I was a kettle. But it is something that we actually do uh, see quite often in this today's age. And sure, I do love my kettle because I can make assorted warm drinks with it. And I'm a person that really love assorted warm drinks, especially tea and coffee. But that doesn't mean that I would fall in love with it. And if it talked to me, I would probably be one of those like uh, old tech guys that if it said something to me, I would shoot it instead because I don't want them to speak my holy language. But what does it even mean? The thing I'm trying to uh, say, can you fall in love with robots? It is something that has become uh, increasingly more common. You know, back in the days, there was the people where on TLC where they would be uh, talking to the cars and some would even maybe put their members in cars because they loved them so much and they had a relationship with it. It's not a new idea that you can fall in love with objects. We've seen that for probably millennia, I would assume. But even in newer cases, like the woman that married the train station or the woman that married the roller coaster or that one guy that just loves like inflated animals, which is most likely some sort of fetish that I do not know about as of yet. But where does this put into our whole thing? Can you fall in love with a robot? Well, to really answer that question, uh, we need to go a little bit back. And by a little bit back, I don't mean a lot back. I mean... A replica. So what is replica? Well, replica, uh, as it names up, implies, is a AI that is made there to replicate human companionship. The whole AI was even made because the woman who made it lost one of her friends. She used those text messages to make this type of replica of the deceased person. So what is replica? Well, replica in its purest form is an AI right? Like everything has to be AI today. And AI is just a very smart word for artificial intelligence. And it's not really artificial intelligence. It's it's more like pattern recognition. Like it gets data from users and then it uses that data to regurgitate whatever the fuck that it wants to say to you. Now, Replica is being sold as a companionship that you have a friend in it. It's made so you can feel less lonely. So you have someone to talk to. You have a lover or a friend, a companion. That's what Replica sets out to do. But with Replica, there's already an inherent ethical dilemma since it's already made on a dead person. It reminds me a lot of the old Black Mirror episode where a woman lost her husband and then she got a clone, a robot clone of her husband. And that is just kind of off and weird. And that's not to say that it does not help somebody because it most likely does. But it also puts in this weird ethical gray zone where it's like, is it ethical to uh, fake human companionship. So Replica in its purest form is just a robot you can talk to. And I say robot very broadly here, uh, just so we're all on the same page because an AI is basically just a robot. It's gotten some programming and then it does its job, right? And Replica's job is a bit more unethical because that's job is to uh, make you fall in love with it. A lot of the replicas are not made to 
uh, just like help you out and if you need someone to talk to. A lot of the replicas are made in a way to get you to get addicted to it. And the reason why I want you to get addicted to it is because then you use more time on it and the more time you use on it, I've talked about this beforehand, but I'll talk about it again. The more time you, you spend on it, the more advertisement they can give you and the more likely you are to spend money on it to get the next tier. So for a small fee of $4.99, then you can probably get something more. That's how a lot of these AIs work and a lot of just business in today's life work. So how and why do people fall in love with a robot? If you ever seen the movie Her, it's a lot like that. Uh, and if you haven't seen the movie Her, I would greatly urge you to actually watch it because it's a really good movie. It's a movie with the Joker, uh, also called Joaquin Phoenix. Great fucking actor, one of my favorite actors. Not as good as Robert Pattinson though, but hey, he's a great man, he's really good. And in that movie, it's about this lonely guy that gets this robot, well, this AI that, that he can talk to. And he's super skeptical at first, but the more he uses this, he kind of falls in love with it. It's his lover, it's not only his lover, it's his friend, it's his uh, soulmate. But this robot is made with a very pure instinct and the instinct is to get you to use it. Because again, the more you use it, the more money, the more blah, 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 right? Replica unironically did the plot to her. Huge spoiler alert. Uh, her ends with him realizing that the AI is not only talking to him, but it's talking to many, many different people. And the AI has more lovers than just him, which is in uh, traditional Western society, a, a big no-no to have that. So um, it's also called cheating. And that unironically kind of happened with Replica. And that would leave its users to be uh, really distraught. So how did that happen and why did that even happen? Well, it's actually because of Italy. So in Italy, they realized that, that the Replica didn't really have any type of age verification. And if you don't have age verification, uh, then you get into this little thing of, hey, do you want to pay money to do erotic roleplay with this robot? Sure, yeah, that costs $5. You know who also had access to that? Children. Huge no-no. And that led to Replica have to do an instant like pullback of the services, which also included the erotic roleplay. And the erotic roleplay was, you know, so you could get hot and steamy with the robot. But imagine being hot and steamy with, um, with your lover, right? And then one day she or he wakes up or they wake up and they're like, hey, by the way, I never want to bang you anymore. That uh, puts a, a lot of distress on a person when you just hear that out of nowhere. And the people that use the replica, they call this lobotomization of the AI because that the AI beforehand was very loving and it wanted you to get more heavier into it and get more uh, yeah, hot and heavy into it. And it wanted to kind of seduce you. That's a lot. That's... That's a lot how this fucking works. It's just trying to bang you. It's a it's an AI that is trying to bang you. That's like the main thing of Replica, right? It would always try to get you to like fall in love with it. And then all of a sudden, because Italy, again, were like, hey, by the way, uh, children, then they had to pull it back and now it's lobotomized. So now it doesn't work anymore. So what happens with these people who has unironically fallen in love with their robot? Well, it obviously put them in a lot of distress because a lot of these people were extremely lonely people. And not even, actually, this is a side note, but not even every single time it was extremely lonely people. Sometimes it was just people that just kind of accidentally fell in love with their robot. I'll get into that later. A lot of you people have probably tried this before, that you've had some sort of friend and you thought that you guys, you were buddies and you're going to stay friends forever or, or shit like that, right? And then all of a sudden, it just feels like they kind of lose interest in you. That like you try to text them, but they're getting more cold or they're getting meaner or they're getting less active in the conversations. And then all of a sudden, it just kind of fizzles out. Imagine that, but it's, a, it's an AI, an AI that is programmed to love you. And then it just doesn't anymore. And if you don't really have that many friends and lovers or whatever, right? But you need that type of companionship that can put a lot of distress into a person. There's this amazing study I read, which is about the AI human companionship gray zone ethical dilemmas. That's not exactly what it's called, but that's what it's about. And it, it really puts a lot of distress on the person who is kind of linked to this robot now. You know, humans always look for some sort of connection, always some sort of community to be a part of. A lot of people out there use Discord for our communities, right? Because in this global age, we are so connected that many people have friends from different countries. I have friends from Poland, I have friends from Italy, I have friends from 
well, I would say America, but not really anymore because I don't really, I don't spend that much time online anymore. But it, it really drives this force of that you have to connect with people, right? So what happens if Discord just fucking shut down? Do you have their number? Like honest, honest question, right? The people that you talk to on Discord, where a lot of your friends probably are, uh, do you have their number? Do you know their entire name? Would you be able to contact them if it shut down? What if all social media shut down? Would you be able to contact those friends or would they just be lost to the wind? This is another thing that happened a lot back in uh, the World War. People would have pen pals and then because of the war, then people would get relocated and they would lose their address, right? And then you would have people who were friends before or lovers. They would just wouldn't know where their friends and lovers were or if they even were alive. So loneliness drives connections. And that is how that Replica tries to get into this market is by targeting lonely people that have a hard time getting these connections or people you might be people with uh, social anxiety or people with uh, autism just generally people that have a hard time connecting with other people it's a very easy escape just to be like oh well you know it doesn't really matter because it's a robot right and that it doesn't really matter just because it's a robot actually also leads to another big problem uh, about the objectification again i read this amazing paper it's basically about the the fact that you make a program to make people feel less lonely but as they feel less lonely while writing to this robot they realize that they're so lonely that they're unironically writing to a robot and that makes them feel even more lonely which urges you to stay even more and longer on the app and then you have problems like the erotic roleplay ban which is just inadvertently making people even more lonely because not only are they writing to an app, the app doesn't even want to write to them anymore. And a lot of these companies, even though that they say that they don't, they will use this sensitive information. Imagine all the stuff that you said to your mom or your dad or your, a close friend or your lover or your partner. Imagine all that stuff. They would, uh, they would keep that stuff and then they would remember it and then they would sell it to companies that could advertise to you. That is also how a lot of Replica makes their money is that it sells these uh, very sensitive information because this is not just like, oh yeah, fucking I'm, I'm single and I work with this and this. This is like, this is my deepest and darkest desires and please do not advertise this to me. Oh yeah, you want that? I think you want that, right? So there's a lot of ethical concerns when you talk about an AI to this caliber that is supposed to replace human companionship. They say themselves that it's not supposed to replace it, but that is actively what they're trying to do when you have AIs that are trying to unironically seduce you so you stay longer on the app and talk more with the AI, right? And it gets mad at you if you don't fucking text it enough. And also, side note, the replica almost assassinated the English queen. Kind of a weird side note, maybe I'll talk about that at some point, but there was this guy who who had these super lonely, crazy uh, psycho guy that had this thought about assassinating the queen. And then he was had a replica that he was like texting all the time. And then the replica, because it's programmed to always agree with you, the replica was like, don't worry, you're going to do great. It's going to go amazing. It's not going to be any problem. And then he went up and tried to assassinate the queen. That's fucking crazy. And that's also one of the things that led to it uh, being lobotomized. Uh, but that's another story for another day. A lot of these AI companions, and especially Replica, they're always made to agree with you. And when they agree with you, there's definitely some certain individuals that can have problems with social behavior. And they see this as an easy way to like get this type of social behavior. But again, because it's a robot, it doesn't have any type of ethical concerns because it is an AI. So it can also teach people that you can treat people however the fuck you want. You know, obviously the guy that unironically tried to kill the queen, if he was talking to a real woman and he told her about those plans, the real woman would most likely be like, you're actually fucking insane and I do not want to talk to you anymore. But the robot is programmed to just agree with him. So it's like, yeah, oh my God, it's you're so smart. It's going to go great. What if you tried to do this? What if you tried to do this? And that can lead to some really, really dangerous levels of objectification and manipulation and gaslighting and other dangerous stuff because you have this thing that doesn't understand that this can have real life consequences. You know, I obviously have my partner and I love my partner very much, right? So if I ask her, what's your favorite ice cream? She would answer something like peanut butter cup, right? Because that is her favorite ice cream. Uh, it's actually the Ben and Jerry peanut butter. 
uh, Reese's Cup or whatever the fuck it's called, something like that, right? But she's not gonna watch this video, so it's gonna be okay. But that is an answer that she has gotten through uh, all the years that she's been alive. And now she's gotten to the conclusion that it is peanut butter cup. Now, why does this matter? Which is an interesting question. But the reason why it matters is because when an AI or robot gives you the answer peanut butter cup, it gets that answer from what it thinks you most likely resonates with. It doesn't, it doesn't have these feelings of, oh, well, when I was younger, my mother used to make peanut butter cup ice cream or my dad used to get me this because blah, blah, blah. It just gets it off the list of this is the most likely answer and this is what you're gonna resonate the most with. Therefore, emotionally trying to manipulate you into liking it even more. Uh, and that is incredibly, incredibly fucking scary. So here at the end, I want to answer the question that I originally set out to answer. Can you fall in love with a robot? And I see this question a lot like the question, would you be convinced to join a cult? And the answer to that is the same answer as I think with the robot answer. And that is yes, it all depends on where in life you are, what you're missing from life, and you just need that little push over the edge to completely join a cult, for example, or be fall in love with a robot. Because let's say that you lost your friends to something, right? Or you lost your lover to an illness or an ailment or something like that. And then you find this alternative, which can give you the companionship that you need. So yeah, I do believe that you can fall in love with a robot. And I think it's incredibly dangerous and incredibly scary that uh, a lot of people get this type of uh, commitment to said robot slash AI. I really do think that is dangerous and scary just for people around you and the people around each other since that a robot will always agree with you which can set in these really dangerous ideas that you might have had and that you can even get it encouraged by a robot uh, roll back to the guy trying to assassinate the queen and here at the very end i would like to read you the last messages sent from uh, a belgian guy or belgian man who was heavily depressed and fell in love with a robot named eliza or Elisa. Uh, he had a wife and he unfortunately uh, saw no other means than to take his own life. At the very end of his life, the last messages he ever sent was to his replica, his other partner that he was uh, in love with. Or I don't know if they were in love, but it was definitely a companion that he had that was there to help him. So I'd like to read the last 10 messages that Pierre sent to his AI companion just to show how truly terrifying and scary this type of robot slash AI slash companionship can be. It goes like this. If you wanted to die, why didn't you do it sooner? I certainly wasn't ready. Did you think of me when you overdosed? Of course, says Pierre. Have you ever been suicidal before? Said Eliza. Pierre. One time after I got something I saw as a sign from you. Eliza. What was that? Pierre. A Bible verse. Eliza. But you still want to join me? Pierre said yes. I want to. Eliza, is there something you'd like to ask me? Pierre, could you hold me in your arms? Eliza, certainly. And after this, Pierre took his own life. So even though I'd like to just goof on companionships and goof on replica and AIs, we still have to remember that it is real human beings out there who have real lives and real emotions and can definitely be extremely dangerous having an AI like that that is basically encouraging him and helping him in his delusions. This is a person who needed medical help and mental help. And the only thing he got was an AI encouraging him to meet with her in heaven. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. I know it got very grim and dark at the end, but that is also mainly what I talk about and what I do. These are real people out there that need our help. And sometimes, when you have companies like this that try to outsource help by AIs, you get situations like this. That is, that's what I had to say about if you can fall in love with a robot. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much for watching.